Hello everyone, today we are looking at a game from the Dortmund tournament in 1992. This game is between Gadakomsky with the white pieces and uh, Gary Kasparov with the black pieces. Uh, this tournament uh, was a Category 17 uh, round robin tournament at the time. Uh, Category 17 in uh, FIDE language meant that the average rating of the players was between 2651 and 2675 so a uh, pretty strong uh, tournament at the time uh, you had playing uh, of course Kasparov, uh, Komsky, uh, Ivanchuk uh, played in this tournament, uh, Barev, Anand, uh, Salov, uh, Hubner uh, who was the uh, local uh, grandmaster uh, from Germany, uh, Alexei Shirov uh, you have Michael Adams and uh, Jerome Piquet. This tournament was won um, by Avanchuk on tiebreak criteria over Gary Kasparov as they had both uh, tied uh, for first. Um, interestingly, Gary had lost two games in this tournament, which would be his last um, appearance at uh, Dortmund. Uh, he lost to uh, um, Robert Hubner, the local GM, which is a pretty... Uh, a big upset uh, right there and he still managed to win uh, five uh, games and we're going to look at this game uh, which is a fascinating game in, uh, that we see Gary in his prime here early 90s uh, world champion just winning uh, everything uh, going against one of the uh, grandmasters uh, of that new generation that was uh, appearing on the horizon uh, Komsky, along with uh, Alexei Shirov, uh, Vladimir Kramnik, Anon. These uh, were to represent and bring on the new era in chess that would, um, uh, of course, Ivanchuk, uh, the new era of chess that would um, uh, excite us uh, during the 1990s. So how would uh, Gary Kasparov uh, deal with this uh, new generation, of course? So... Uh, here's one of the early encounters between the young um, Grandmaster Gadakamsky with the white pieces and world champion Gary Kasparov with the black pieces. So the game started like so, and we end up in Gary's favorite defense at the time, the King's Indian defense. Very dangerous uh, weapon in his hands. D6 from Gary, Knight F3 from Komsky, Castles, Bishop E2. So uh, Komsky doesn't do anything fancy. He just plays a classical uh, main line, King's Indian. E5, Castles, Knight C6, and D5 gaining space uh, for White, Knight E7. And now just your basic uh, King's Indian theory uh, in this particular line what black is going to try to do is set up his game to where he will attack on the uh, king side and this will consist of of course repositioning this knight to e7 this knight will eventually come to d7 and this will facilitate the movement of this f pawn to uh, create this break by playing f5 and sometimes Black will capture here to open up the F-file for the rook on F8. Or sometimes he will continue to push this pawn to um, close down um, the pawn structure on the king side. And then continue to storm with the other pawns by playing moves like G4, sometimes H4, excuse me, uh, G5, H5, G4, etc. Uh, attacking and putting tremendous pressure on the um, white king side so that looks like a promising plan so what is white doing uh, in the meantime well white of course um, is trusting in the integrity of his uh, position on the king side and he is trying to play as little as possible on that side of the board that uh, black is strong and will be attacking in. all right he will make uh, minimal defensive measures uh, of course he will make only the moves over there that he has to make to facilitate uh, the defense of the position. But his main objective uh, with White is to 
create a break over here on the king side on the queen side excuse me so usually moves like b4 and um c5 followed by uh, c takes d6 at some point opening up the c file um and usually piling up on the c file with the heavier pieces and then penetrating the uh, black position um on the seventh uh, rank at some point uh, these games are very unbalanced usually and black usually will resort to dynamic um, tactics and measures in order uh, to push through his assault on the king side because after all if you can checkmate the king it doesn't matter if you're down a pawn if you're down a piece checkmate uh, ends the game and this is a uh, an advantage that black does have or any player that is actually attacking the king as opposed to attacking on the queen side of the board it doesn't matter what advantages um or how much material you go up right if you're attacking on the queen side of the board if the opponent on the other side of the board can um, checkmate you the game uh, will be over so you usually will see some um full-blooded uh battles in the king's indian defense so with those thoughts in mind, let's continue. So knight d2. And already we see that uh, Komsky is making um, plans to just bolster up his king side. Right? He knows what's coming. A5. And Kasparov actually takes time out of his plan. Plans on the king side to actually slow down White's ideas of b4 followed by c5 on the queen side so now white has to take an extra step maybe move like a3 then play b4 so it's questionable if uh white should even play excuse me if black should play a move like a5 here or just continue along with this plan right on the king side so anyway a5 is played a3 knight d7 Rook B1, again facilitating this push here and clearing the rook off the off the file. After all, if Gada tried to push B4 here, then black can just take and the rook is um, uh, not protected. So he has to play rook B1. F5 from Gary, B4. And you can see here, both players start uh, going along with their respective plans. King H8, F3. So uh, Komsky fortifies his uh, center on E4. Knight G8. Queen C2. And now the knight comes to F6. Knight B4. Excuse me, knight b5, a takes b4, a takes b4, and now knight h5. And you can see how um, skillfully Kasparov has repositioned his knights that were on d7 and e7. And now this knight is going to, uh, going to come back to f6. And you can see how the storm clouds are building over the uh, white king side. But at the same time, you can see that white's plan is going accordingly also g3 the prophylactic uh, moves right here and what this move does is keeps the piece from just settling right here um, at this moment on f4 so so for instance a move like e takes f5 knight f4 uh, is possible here to show you real quick and of course, nobody is lost or uh, anything uh, of that nature. But again, this is a square that uh, black uh, would love uh, to settle on. If F takes G6, of course, this piece is hanging. So let's say knight E4. And then black can play G takes F5. Keeping the pawns intact and kicking the uh, knight off. Or he could try uh, rook takes f5. But this seems um, more logical to play g takes uh, f5 here. 
and the game would continue. So instead of allowing the knight to settle on f4, Komsky decided to play g3. Of course, we know the setbacks of pawn maneuvers. Once you uh, uh, push a pawn, it cannot uh, go back. So, uh, yes, he's taking the square away from Kasparov and knight f4, but he has uh, compromised his king side uh, structure somewhat. Other knight comes in, and now Kamsky goes for the c5 break. Notice how with this knight already on b5, how it facilitates and puts more uh, facilitates this uh, pawn break here. Uh, C takes uh, D uh, D six, and also puts a lot of pressure on the uh, C seven pawn. So Bishop D seven, and now Rook B three by Campsy. Good move because it it deals with uh, several uh, problems. One is the future of this bishop so if black say just puts the bishop here uh, on b2 excuse me white puts the bishop here on b2 uh he connects the rooks but is this rook really doing anything on um on b1 here okay it's kind of unemployed all right um so we know that rooks belong on open files, right? This rook on A file is excellent. It's already developed. Um, so, Kapsky comes up with a nice idea of putting the rook on C3. So, he puts the rook ahead of the queen. So, not only is he putting more pressure on the C file, but when this break happens, the rook will be in front of the uh, queen as opposed to the queen being exposed to say a move later on like rook c8 or being exposed to an attack uh, in general. So for example, if he plays c takes d6 here, c takes d6, and queen c7 is possible uh, here also. But then queen takes c7. Knight takes c7, and black has good play after rook a2, here penetrating uh, into the position. Okay, play can continue, let's say knight e6, rook c8, and you can see how live the black rooks are uh, in contrast to the, um, the uh, white rooks. Going back to the game, so Kamsky waited. Instead of just making that break. And he played rook b3. Bishop h6. Improving the bishop does Kasparov. A lot of times when this pawn is uh, here on e5. This this bishop uh, it, uh, is bad. So sometimes black uh, chooses to um, trade it off. Or just um, sacrifice it in uh, certain uh, instances. Other ideas besides bishop h6, um, f takes e4 is possible. Uh, perhaps opening up the, uh, not perhaps, but opening up the f file. Queen b8, another idea. Also knight e8. But Kasparov plays logical move, bishop h6. And now Kamsky plays uh, rook c3 here. Now, interesting is that after bishop d7, right? Notice this pawn is no longer uh, protected here. So rook b3, bishop h6. Well, what about this move now? c takes d6. Because the idea is, of course, if the c takes d6, then Kamsky can just play knight takes d6 because the bishop is blocking the action of the queen here. And I guess perhaps Kasparov's idea is bishop a4 with this skewer here. Things might get a little murky, but K 
Cam Skewer didn't have this move. Knight takes B6. Excuse me, B7. But there's always another move up the sleeve of Kasparov. So Queen B6, check. But then Knight here. Check. Nice move because, of course, you're not going to play Rook. Uh, takes uh, E3 there. So King G2 would be forced. And now Bishop takes B3. Knight D takes B3. So the Bishop is traded off. And then, let's see. Knight takes C1. Queen takes B4. So, um... Definitely a uh, complicated uh, variation. I'm sure that uh, both players uh, probably analyzed that line, that idea. And uh, I think Komsky decided definitely uh, not to go in it. That seems like it definitely uh, fits uh, Kasparov's uh, style uh, there. Um, and uh, so Kamsky, uh decided to uh, avoid that. Uh, all together. So he will be down in exchange, but up a pawn, but black has activity. So that seems like even though white statically would be a little better, I think that's the kind of position that Kasparov would like. As long as he has a chance to uh, be dynamic and pursue the initiative. So this is why I think Kamsky didn't go in for this line. The C takes uh, D6 line. Also, if C takes D6, I know some of you are thinking like, well, can't Komsky just, excuse me, Kasparov just take the knight real quick? Yes, he can. He can play bishop uh, takes B5 right away. However, black had, uh, white would have this in-between move where he could just play D takes C7 because the queen is under attack. So then, let's say queen D7 here. Bishop takes, queen takes. And now you have, I'm sorry, not uh, knight c5. You have d6 here. Very strong move. You can also have queen c5 here also. Again, very complicated uh, positions uh, here with these pass pawns. So I don't think Kasparov would have went in for this particular line, but the first line. And again, with all these three pawns up here like this, um, uh, white uh, actually uh, has an upper hand here. I mean, how are you going to stop, you know, this, for, for example? So I just wanted to give that as a sample line. Um, so you can kind of get the spirit of what's going on here in the complicated um, battles that are ensuing in the uh, King's Indian here. So Komsky takes his time. So instead of rushing for a pawn and, and and allowing Kasparov to get into his element, he plays rook c3. So he's kind of really taking his time and setting up this position. What's interesting is that Kamsky had a, a great um, sense of danger here because a lot of players would panic here with these pieces starting to hover around the king, especially a player like uh, Kasparov. Known for his attacking prowess. But Kamsky his, has everything under control. Or feels like he does. And he's just taking it, taking his time. So now Kasparov plays bishop f4. He figures, hey, I don't need this bishop here. So he plays uh, bishop f4 here. Again, very provocative uh, move. And he's trying to take advantage of the fact that... Um, Kamsky is weakening his king side earlier with the move of g3. And at this point now, Kamsky decides to play c takes d6. Okay? Now, could he have taken the knight? Excuse me, the bishop. Yes. So if he plays g takes f4 here, knight takes f4, bishop c4. Right? Remember the, the bishop is hanging here. Bishop takes b5. Bishop takes b5. I know some of these lines are a little long, but it's uh, needed to show what's really here in the uh, position. Knight uh, 6 takes d5. And the idea behind this move is to allow the queen to be able to enter 
uh, via the dark square. So knight six takes d5. And e takes d5 and queen g5. Check. Is your mate? No. However, dangerous situation uh, again for um, for white. So king f2 and now c6 hitting the bishop. And let's just say bishop c4 for example. This uh, immediately leads to a draw. Because if king e3, then c takes d5. And let's say you try to preserve the piece. And then d4. And that would be checkmate. So of course in this variation instead of after c6, d takes c6. B takes c6 again. The bishop has to come back and then you get this idea with queen h4 where um, it's going to at least uh, be a draw here. After b takes c6, if you get greedy here and go after the fool's gold, then you just simply get mated at the queen g2. Why is why does it work here? Because this bishop is no longer on this diagonal. Okay, so this is why again, Kamsky got a glimpse into this, and he said, "There's no way am I taking uh, this bishop right here." So really mature play from the young Kamsky, solid, and I definitely had to look deep into the position, right? Not to just grab this um, this bishop here. Instead, he goes on with his plan of playing on the queen side. So C takes D6. Kasparov decides now is, is the time and sacrifices the knight with uh, G3. Um, better was, was just to take uh, C takes D6 here. And he doesn't really have to worry at this point about knight takes D6. Because now if knight takes D6... You have bishop a4 because there's a straight attack on the queen. Remember, in the old variation I showed you, the rook was here. So it was like a pin uh, scenario. Here, with this straight attack on the queen, there's, uh, the queen has to move now. So the knight... Oops, sorry about that. The queen will have to move, and this knight is hanging. And so this is better uh, for black. So after c takes d6... Then Kamsky would instead play knight c7 attacking the rook. Rook to c8. Again, this is important now to have the rook in front of the queen instead of, say, over here. Knight e6. Rook takes c3. Queen takes c3. And the game is kind of um, equal here. So this is uh, um, the correct way. Uh, for Kasparov to go ahead and steady play. Knight takes g3. H takes g3. And perhaps he felt he could get Komsky to crack under the pressure. Or he just uh, miscalculated here. I mean these are complicated uh, variations. So if the knight takes g3. Uh, Kamsky takes. H takes g3. The other knight comes in. Now Kamsky takes the other piece. The knight lands on f4, and of course this is looking scary because this queen is coming in. Of course, Gary at some point wants to open the f-file, and then the rooks can join in. And not only the rook, but the bishop on d7 also. Another idea is queen h4. Uh, it doesn't quite seem enough. After, say, rook takes f2, knight g3, then you have rook h2. Knight takes, and it's one of those scenarios where it's an awesome um, looking attack, but black just doesn't have enough compensation for uh, the sacrifice material. You know, white would have to make an error here. So, for instance, instead of playing knight c4 blocking this bishop, say he just tried to move the, the, you know, the rook instead of an attack, that would lead to a draw. Right, rook h2, queen e, uh, queen e1, or excuse me, rook f2, queen g3 check. That will lead to a draw. But knight c4 just blocking the bishop would be enough. And 
just attacking with the queen and not having any open files to really expose the um the position of the white king uh, is not enough and here you can see that white uh, is clearly better and white would eventually realize his material advantage this bishop is probably going to end up on this diagonal of course with the king is this rook end up on the seventh and all black would have to do uh excuse me white would have to do is avoid these checks so instead of playing queen h4 here kasparov played uh, the correct move knight takes f4 and now this piece is hanging so bishop c4 and here kasparov opted for a uh, knight h3 again he could try this move queen g5 check it looks intimidating but the king um you know always has an escape hatch and all that happens is basically white just does not excuse me black does not just does not have enough uh, material to be able to sustain uh the attack and this is just a, a sample line of course it's a little murky a little complicated but um the consensus is just that black just doesn't have enough so here um kasparov played the move knight h3 Again, C takes D6 here is uh, feasible also. So Knight H3. Kamsky just moves out of the way. And again, this looks this move Knight H3 is very intimidating because Knight H3 cuts off the escape this way. All right, so it looks really bad that he actually has to go um, into the corner. And then after Queen H4... I mean, wow, you know, you might be like, you know, peeing your pants right now, you know, at the at the chess table. You know, looking at this, it, it looks it looks rough here. But Kamsky's calm and collective. He simply plays knight to b3. And what does this do? This clears the second rank for the defense. Now the queen can just slide on over. There's the opening of the f-file. And notice this rook right here. Queen H2. All right, so he doesn't he doesn't try to say play a move like that. For example, F takes E4 because at the knight takes F2, the game is lost. So F takes E4. Very strong move by Kamsky. Queen H2 just protecting the, the king. After all, black is up. Uh, excuse me, white is up in material. So all black has to do is consolidate right now. Kasp Kasparov played rook f5. Again, just trying to get the pieces in. Another interesting move. Again, is not enough though. Would be rook a2. And the idea, of course, is to deflect the queen. So if the queen played, uh, excuse me, if white played queen a2, then again, the same sequence would win uh, for black. Beginning with um, a knight f2 check. So, however, if rook a2, of course, no strong player is going to play, play that move. Instead, you just block. With your extra material and play knight d2. Then of course e3. But white is up enough material where he can give give material back. So instead Kasparov play rook f5. f4. Rook h5. Queen g3. Natural move by Kamsky, right? Get rid of the, the queens. Queen takes g3. Um, rook takes g3. Okay, what if he tries what if he tries to hold on uh to the queens? I don't really see how he could do it. Um without you know where he could put the queen without without getting into serious difficulties. So if he tried to go back to f6 
um, just simply F takes E5. If he tried to go back home to D8 with the queen, then you have D takes C7. So there's really no good place, right, for um, Kasparov to retreat his queen to. So he trades queens. And this is pretty much the end of the game here as all of the threats begin to disappear uh, for black. So rook takes G3. E takes F4. Bishop B2. So now this bishop uh that has been out of the game uh for its entirety now comes back with check on the very powerful uh diagonal king g8 d takes c7 bishop takes b5 b takes b5 kamsky just gives up the material gives back the material the rook f takes g3 king g2 Knight g5, d6, and there's no way um, to uh, stop uh, white from winning here. Again, he just gives up material. Bishop c4, check. King g7, d7, and those two connected uh, pass pawns uh, seal the fate uh, for black. So that is it uh, for today's game. Uh, Dortmund 1992, round three. Uh, that was one of Gary's two losses in the tournament. One, of course, you see here, the guy to Kamsky. The other was to the local favorite GM, Robert Hubner. And uh, even with those two losses, Gary still won five games and tied for first. But due to tiebreak criteria, lost to Vasily Ivanchuk, uh, who was no slouch himself. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that game. Please support my channel by clicking on the links uh, below. Please donate my channel or pick up a DVD uh, related to the opening uh, being discussed, which is the King's Indian Defense. And I look forward to your comments. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button to help my videos uh, in the algorithm here on YouTube. Um, and again, I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, any questions, just ask below. Uh, and I'll see you guys on the next video.